That was a painful race. Piastri crashing out, securing the midfield. On behalf of the board, I wanted to offer you our congratulations on this season's finish. You met the expectations well and secured a solid place in the upper midfield. Our confidence in your abilities as team principal are clearly well placed and we hope to see an equally exciting performance next year. So they want me to stay essentially so i'm happy to stay <laughs> to be honest you're doing a fine job leading alpine keep it up next season good day patrick difficult race uh this weekend we are disappointed that the team performed below expectations we know that every team has bad races and we hope to see a return to form soon 2022 season results we are at the end of another amazing season of f1 we saw innovation and competition from all teams this year which created a heated battle for every position in the championships uh at the end of the day it was ferrari that claimed victory in the constructors championship and Charles leclerc who came out on top in the drivers championship max verstappen loses out by 26 points Oh, I see. Red Bull lose out in um, the constructors as well. I don't pay attention to the top because I'm so focused on my drivers. So I would I didn't notice that earlier. But yeah, it seems like it's a Leclerc drivers championship. This is every Ferrari fan's wet dream uh, that they expected at the early stages of this season. But it seems it's unlikely now uh, in real life. Um, yeah so that is it constructors and drivers below yeah we got p4 and i think we secure quite a bit of winnings sitting in p4 so i'm quite happy with that uh yeah our best performing driver was alonso maybe alcon if we kept him maybe it could have been p7 or p8 but i don't know it was a decision that we made early doors so where's alcon alcon's p11 oh he's a reserve driver for alpha uh aston martin is he Wait, did, okay, hold on. I'm excited to see what happened there. Just to let you know, with the season ending, we are no longer allowed to design or manufacture any new car parts until next year. The warehouse has also been cleared up because any parts that we designed this year will be invalid for next year's Constructors' Championship. Interesting. Upcoming board review is in seven days. High confidence for now. So F1, we got Sebastian Buemi at reserve for Red Bull. Interesting. Was he always there? I don't know. Might have been. K-Mac at Haas, Jack doing for us. Zhou Guan Yu is at Alst uh, Alfa Romeo, excuse me. Richard Vershore is the reserve driver for Williams. Interesting. Boshong is at Alfa Tauri. Okay. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg is still at Aston Martin Reserve. Then where's Ocon? Ocon was at Aston Martin, apparently. Kubica is still a reserve for Alfa Romeo. Okay. Uh, Sonoda, Fittipaldi for Haas. Yeah, that we know. Um, De Vries is that Mercedes reserve? Yeah, that we know. I think that's also in real life right now. The TV Russell Stoffel Van Dorn is a reserve at McLaren. Okay, because Ocon's like eighty something rated. He's a free agent. You see, why was there an Aston Martin sign next to his name? Is that a foreshadow to Aston Martin replacing their current driver with Ocon? Perhaps I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna actually sign. Um. I think I want to sign Alonso for another season or two. He's going to retire soon anyway. Let's offer him like a 9.9 .9 mil contract. I think someone mentioned how to... For me personally, it's better to give him a higher salary. Okay. And lump sum and give him no bonus. It saves money. Okay. So let's give him like a... 800k lump sum we'll give him an 800k lump sum we'll give him about 11 mil or 10.5 mil this is going to be a massive contract for him let's see three seasons let me see if he accepts this he should sign contract declined why Race target bonus, he's not happy with that. So does he want two seasons? Not interested in entry contract talks, okay. I'm wondering if he's considering retiring right now. It doesn't show. We got board performance review. L plan, we got an achievement you guys can't see, but it says L plan, wow, that's cool. Um, 
end of season board review. The board has assessed your performance as team principal for the entire season and, and have compiled the below report. Target position is fourth and we got fourth. Target was to win, or that's in the long-term objective. So we have to try and get the constructor championship victory by the end of 2025. We'll see if we can do that. Best driver position was P6, uh, Alonso. Our team rating has gone up a little. We're revered now. Constructors, drivers, and heritage stays the same, but drivers and constructors has gone up. Team rating is three and a bit. Uh, high board confidence with 1.5 team bonus. Okay, thank you very much. I'll take that money. Pit crew performance. Oh no, it's going down. With the new season approaching, I wanted to give you an update on why you might be seeing a lower performance from our pit crew. Between our new regulations, the pit crew getting a little rusty and our more experienced members leaving the team and getting replaced. A performance drop between seasons is inevitable. I'll attach a report detailing change below. You should check that the pit crew is training in your preferred area and change their pit training foot. Wait, that's a thing? Hold on. Oh my god, I didn't even see this all this time and we've gone for all season. <laughs> um training focus wow let's go tire changes let's go up because i'm not doing many wing adjustments mid-race so i don't think that's a necessary act uh tire changing is important though and then we'll see if we can get more training done in the front jack and car release regulation changes for 2023 of course we voted on this over the course of this season pole position bonus point that's a yes so whoever gets pole position will get an additional uh point by the end of the season or by the end of the race weekend front wing and rear wing gets adjusted which i think we should be well adapted to and then also prize money changes and i think we're going to try to keep alpine up here so i'm uh, looking forward to that extra boost of money. Please, I beg Alonzo. Still declined. What? Why? I'll give him a race target bonus then. Let's see. Staff changes. Um, Techno chief position secured until 2025. 2023, 2024, 2024. Position will be vacant because, yeah, we don't have Alonzo's signature yet. Uh, Piastri secure until 2024. Let me see if I can get Alonzo's signature now. No, I still cannot. Okay, he stays. Let's renew contract. Boom. Jack Dewan stays as our reserve driver for the next couple seasons. Okay, wind tunnels come through. That's good. All right, we'll upgrade the helipad then for 360,000. Tour center will upgrade as well for a bit more money. Mm. Experience gain goes up 4.9 mil. I think we should have enough money for contract renewals. Alright, that's it. My ultimatum. That was my ultimatum. He's not signing. Alright, we're gonna choose a replacement then. Let's start Gasly. I feel like a lot of you were interested in Gasly. Don't know his funds right now, but let's see. Let's just propose a contract. Let me just conjure something up for seasons i mean this is technically what's happening in real life isn't it to be honest let's be honest here pierre gasly let's see if he wants to come he is a little upset about the salary i expected that maybe we should go something similar to alonzo like five mil or something i think that should be good ah oh, decline contract really memorabilia room in poor condition well, calls for an upgrade because we still have enough funds for um, a full upgrade. Do we upgrade the design center? Engineer capacity goes up, sure. Do I have 18 mil? Can I spend? Yeah, I think I can spend this. I'm not spending too much money on driver contracts and I don't know how the driver contact thing works. Yes, we finally got it. Okay, salary wasn't optimal, but the starting bonus and race target bonus uh, influenced him to cross the line. Okay, we are gonna sign this guy, alright? We are gonna sign Pierre Gasly to replace Alonso, and this is pretty much like real life, I guess. I'm gonna hire him for a mil. Welcome to Alpine. Pierre Gasly! There he is. Alonso replaced. After a series of negotiations that really ruined <laughs> my brain cells. Um, but there we are. 
we got a very young driver lineup relatively young i would say pierre gasly 26 of course oscar piastri 21 and i think i want to keep him here um i think i was a little rash with my decision on thursday uh, i was very upset because i really wanted to push for p3 and just turned out that no matter who's in the car I think it would be a disaster class either way. So I say we round things up. Medium downforce um, up to 80. I think that would be relatively simple. I think we should go for GP. What's his contract looking like? 1.3 mil salary. Buyout fee is 668. We can pay that right now. Let me propose a contract. Let me see. I'm going to try to keep him for a long season. Yes, he will. He will. He will. He will. 1.9 mil. I, so going off of previous streams, everyone's saying sign GP. So I am actually going to hire GP to replace Carol Loos for the first seat. And he will pair up with Pierre Gasly. Hopefully we can have a good um, driver and, you know, race engineer affinity. Maybe we can push for the top. GP, welcome to Alpine. Welcome to the new season. It's time to review the season's regulations, manage the season's engine, and negotiate new obligations with your sponsors. So main fund is 91 million. Wow. Uh, team rating rank is 5th of 10th. Um, so we're middle of the field with our main fund, I guess. Um, sponsor obligations, 12 mil. Provide additional funding in exchange for obligations that you must complete throughout the season. Sponsor requirement is 4 uh, additional obligations zero funding schedule preseason lump sum is 19 mil or so income per race is about 3.8 mil um there's nothing much i can do about that but a total of 103 mil sponsorship value these i think are not too big of a deal we can easily go around this so i'm just going to leave those in so we'll have four sponsor requirements and then two additional obligations that we'll fill in so we're trying to get fourth or above season objective okay balance is looking very healthy right now 141 mil caps cost cap um yeah that's fine technical chassis not much front wing we've improved Regulation changes is a minus 0 0.6. Oh, we lose a bit of medium speed and then lose a bit of low speed. That's not a big deal, I guess. Uh, arrow sensitivity, we do gain a bit. Okay, we've done well to protect these then. Rear wing. Oh, we lose a bit on medium and low speed. we got to figure something out for that this season. And otherwise, I think there was no other regulation changes. Alpine, Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes manufactured their own powertrain, so cannot change manufacture. <laughs> This is just like my team. You can choose a different powertrain, but we can actually see the difference in performance in all these powertrains. So we are a little bit faster than Mercedes on raw engine power. Um, durability is also pretty high. It's third in the rankings. Red Bull has the best powertrain by the looks of it. Uh, thermal resistance, fuel efficiency is a little low though. Uh, but gearbox durability is high and ERS durability is a little low, but that's fine. So overall, hmm, best team finish, we're fourth. But we are the only one on a Renault engine, aren't we? Like literally on the field, the Renault engine is only in the Alpine, so I'm not surprised. With the new season, Formula 1 quickly approaching, it's time to reflect on the complete roster of drivers that we'll see on track next year. This is exciting because we did make a change with Pierre Gasly, of course. So we'll see if someone moved. The list below comes after all retirements and team changes. Okay, so for Ferrari and Red Bull, it seems like no one has moved. Max Verstappen, Perez, and Buemi, Giovinazzi or Leclerc signs in Giovinazzi. That's expected. Mercedes still stayed the same with De Vries as reserve. Hamilton and Russell. We made significant changes with Gasly coming in, Piastri, and Duan Piastri was a mid-season change, of course. Oh, Alonso went to AlphaTauri. Wow, Sebastian Vettel. Yo. <laughs> what is AlphaTauri doing? They got all the experienced drivers here. Holy crap. Didn't expect that. Um, Alfa Romeo kicked Joe Guan Yu off with Ocon in for Alfa Romeo. 
Okay, okay, this is getting interesting, ladies and gents. For sure, as reserving Kubica as reserve for Alfa Romeo as well. Ha signed Nicholas Latifi. This is what I want in F122, man. Look at how many massive changes are happening in the on the grid here. McLaren not making too many changes. Boshong um still as a reserve. So Latifi, go Tifi. Is that gonna happen, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Gunter Steiner says, screw you, Schumacher, you can go and get Latifi in as his replacement at Haas. Still a possibility, considering that drive that seat is still open. Magnussen in the second car, or rather he's probably first car, technically. Um, and Vesti as reserve. Uh, Williams signed Lance. So you're telling me, Aston Martin said, screw you, son, you're going to Williams and let him leave. Uh, and Schumacher's at Williams. Unbelievable. Okay. Albon went to Aston Martin and Zhou Guanyu went to Aston Martin with Hulkenberg and Pocher being the reserve drivers for each team. Unbelievable. Wow. Uh, this is a series of driver changes that I did not expect. Wow. Sonoda, he's a free agent. He does not have a drive for the next season. Interesting. I need some medium and low speed, high speed corner things. Yeah. Front wing. We're going to invest half the time 2.6 hours of that and then 34 hours here our car part knowledge will go up with an intense approach so i'm just gonna splash the cash a little bit with this project because i do want a bit of experience or understanding of the car part we'll also do intense we'll start intense and then we'll ease off at the end plus we had so much cost cap remaining by the end of the last season um let's go side pods let's invest the rest of the time on this one so let's continue put the remaining engineers and intense approach on this one let's get it i want to put one in front wing and then let's put one in suspension why not oh hartman goes up to 80 rated let's go feedback i need more feedback 85 rated Ben Mitchell, let's go. Smoothness, I'm investing in smoothness because he seriously needs to bump this number up, man. Carol Loss, okay. Well, Carol Loss just got an upgrade there. He went from Alpine to Red Bull. <laughs> wow, what a move from him. Change, let's put these on both cars. The new front wing. Rear wing also change. Let's put the new rear wings on as well. Side pods as well. Let's get the fresh designed ones. Oh. This one is still coming through. Okay, that's fine. Approach intense. I always want to do intense early doors. We still have so much money. It's going to be a little bit pricey. Not too pricey. Let's go. Let's see. I, I don't know. I'm just going to toss about some numbers. Okay, he's already happy with that. Screw it. Might be a little overpriced here, but screw it. I'm rich. Got a new technical chief. Maybe we'll have better developments in the car. But all our youth drivers need smoothness, man. Jack doing 74 rated, let's go. I'm gonna go feedback because the setups are quite important. So I'm gonna go 93 on feedback. Speed needs help and drag reduction is one of the ways we can improve it. Uh, we made some significant progress uh, before the end of last episode. So we will add everything. Guarantee slot, qualifying streak. Hot street target five, five times within the top 10, sure. So let's do that for now. Give Pierre Gasly that. We'll see. Let's test this out for Piastri. As long as the car's in tip-top shape. Let's go attack. Let me go. Conserve. I'm really pleased. Oh, he's really pleased. Okay. Optimal, 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 and then good on traction. Do I touch this? If not, I can always revert. So let me see if I can move the traction but keep everything else. Something like that maybe? It's a tiny bit of a change on cornering and braking stability, which I think will still keep it optimal, no? All right, so fastest in FP3. So playing it, actually, we are fastest. Yikes. Uh, Max Verstappen down in P3. Eh, I guess we are competitive this season. We might be competitive. Settle confidence, we don't know, apparently, because we didn't run laps i guess come on crossing the line here let's see if gasly gets a competitive lap 131 2 which is a little faster than his fp3 laps piastri are you far behind he's four tenths behind okay understood p11 p14 latifi joe albon schumacher and stroll are out okay Ocon, or sorry 
Gasly crossing the line first. Sits P3 just behind Signs. Piastri, what are you? Where's Piastri? Oh! Just behind Gasly by two tenths of a gap. Okay, that's good. Uh, Piastri is in danger. Gasly should be through though. What is up with this fuel issue? Okay, Gasly's through. Piastri's out. What's up with this fuel thing? Aren't they fueled enough for three laps? So one in lap or one out lap, one in lap, and one push lap. But yeah, Piastri's out. P12. Not good. Not good. Shame. Piastri just didn't have the pace. Uh, Vettel, Magnussen, Ricardo, Ocon follow Piastri and getting knocked out. But Pierre Gasly is through to the final round of qualifying. All right, P8. That we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take that. That's fine. That's where we usually sit after qualifying. That's like the car performance level. I'm giving him a chance here. If not, we are actually going to toss this guy into the bin. Uh, but Pierre Gasly P8, which is a solid position to start. Let's go to the race itself. The time has come to fight it out. It's race day. Alpine demonstrated a lot of grit during qualifying here. And we'll be hoping that the hard work pays off when it comes to the race. We saw a reasonable push from Mercedes in qualifying, and they'll have plenty of opportunities here to achieve a great result. We've been having sunny weather here today, but there are some clouds looming that might complicate things for teams further down the line. But which team has perfected the strategy that will see them prevail today, here at the Bahrain Grand Prix? That's strat A, which will give us a 131.25. Um, what about... Yeah, let's do that then. Let's do a soft, hard, medium for Gasly. Worst case scenario, we'll go to plan B, uh, which is the soft, hard, soft. So yeah, maybe something like this. Lap 20, pit, and then we'll pit again on lap 41. We'll do the opposite strat. But let's start this race for now. You guys will get to see a live race reaction a in a virtual world. Here. Drivers now <laughs> but, lined yeah. up on the grid. We'll see. There we have Pierre Gasly. With a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. And here's the second Alpine. They're starting in the bottom half of the grid today, so there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. And we're just moments away now. All right, where am I? I think I'm like that guy here in the second go. or maybe the fourth the guy. But here we go, lights out. And away we go. And away we go. Should we push? Yeah, let's push for about a lap and a half. Like we always do. Let's deploy. Let's go aggressive on the early doors. And then we'll, we'll manage tires towards the end of this stint. Especially for Piastri. He has some space to like play around with. So, yeah, we'll see. We take Bottas at the get-go here for Gasly. Piastri's gone up as well. Passed Alcon to P11. So we'll take that. Come on, Gasly. I have faith in you. Oof. The tire's going quick, though. 84%, 83%. Perhaps it's because we don't have a fresh set of softs to play around with. So we do have to be careful that this doesn't die off too quickly. Yeah, we should be fine. Gazi up to P6, which is good. Okay, let's just take a look at this overtake. Let's see. Up the inside, around the hairpin where a lot of cars spin in F122. And he's made the mistake. Beautiful. Okay. Um, as soon as the lap ends, I'm dropping him down to standard for tire usage and then keeping fuel and uh, DR or ERS on. Um, we'll see if Gasly has the pace in that Alpine. He's going around the outside of the Ferrari by the looks of it. No, never mind. He gets cut off. Maybe after the straight, I uh, will tell him to take it easy on the tires. Piastri is up to P9 now. Both cars up. That's good. Okay. Gasly, I'm dropping you down to standard on tire, please. Back it out. 
back it out. Piastri, let me see how far you, how far away are you from Bottas? Not far. Oh, Gasly tried to move on the Ferrari, but fails to make a stick. He's still well behind, or just right behind Sainz here, so I like it. Sainz going on a very weird weaving action, which is definitely a penalty-worthy offense there, I think. Um, but it's not the only weird thing we see in this game. We've seen cars smash into the barriers and then still manage to drive to the pits, which is weird. Piastri overtakes Bottas, okay, let's take a quick look at Piastri's actions and work here. Okay, up the inside, this seems to be a nice spot for overtakes as well, setting up for the DRS straight, so we'll try to keep that in mind. I mean, it's obvious, that's where I do most of my overtakes in F122 as well. Dropping these guys down to neutral on deployment here. Piastri also needs to go on standard now. Yeah, take it easy. So yeah, let's just see how this goes out, like how this plays out. So far, a good job. Keep pushing. DRS is going to be enabled now. Sector three, yellow flag. Someone's off. There is a Alpha Romeo off. DRS enabled. I don't think it's safety car worthy, but it looks like Alcon has fallen to the let's back. Have now have a watch of this. Looks like Alcon. Ah, the classic spin area, yep. That's the spin. If you get too excited on the power, you'll spin out. Most of the time it happens. Gasly! What can you do? Maybe he can get signs here, but he doesn't make the risky move around the outside. Think it's a fast forward kind of thing now. Oh, he made the move now. He made the move on signs there with DRS. There we go, we get the Let's replay here. Look. Now look at this. It's Pierre nice. Nicely done. We'll take that, we'll take that. But it is gonna be a switching action between Sainz and Gasly for the next couple laps. Someone spun, I think Gasly just spun. You can take a look now. Ah. Okay. So there we have the LP. He's, he locked and up, yes, he locked up. Lock up. Maybe we're pushing too hard. So that's the one thing I heard, like if, you're, if your command of push is on for too long, that happens. The, the brakes are really poor. He keeps talking about brakes, but I wonder if that's just the audio yeah, clip copy. or if that's actually the case, if his brakes are a problem. Gasly spin, Verstappen spun. Let's take a look at the replay. Verstappen now spun. Max Verstappen. Hey. Look at that. They've spun their car. Okay, so that's why there was a yellow flag. Should give... Gasly another spot, right? Verstappen's in the back. Yikes. Let's see. Gasly's coming in now. So let's see how he's going to probably end up being last. But he is going to have the benefit of having the undercut on everyone. Let's see. Good. 2.7 from the team, which is... Okay, I would say. Get the cobwebs out of the way, you know. Perez just stopped as well. Let's see. Gasly up to P12 is not bad. The undercut did work. Did work quite a bit, I must say. Let's see if Piastri gets some kind of good pit stop. 2.8. A little slow. Our pit crew did get kind of debuffed. So I'm not surprised that we're dropping down a bit on the pit times. Well, let's see, did I give him a good pit? Mm, he's gonna be stuck in traffic, just behind that four traffic. But ahead of his teammate, so we'll see. Can he get a move done? Please, can he finally get past? Hmm. Oh, I think he's doing it. Yep, on the Alpha Tori of Alonso. Former teammates can't make a stick. He cannot make it stick.
Around the outside, maybe? Hold on, hold on. Maybe. Come on, make it stick, make it stick. Oh, boy. That was tight. Good job. Okay, back down to neutral. Hoping I can give him the undercut on Verstappen at least. Come on. 2.7 again, consistent. I like that. Consistent from the team. In one lap, pit window opens for Piastri. Okay, Gasly's in open air in P16, which is nice. Norris has spun in turn 8, but he's still in P8. Now just take a look at the McLaren. Oi. <laughs> wow, that's a weird spin. We got held up by Norris. Great. Go around him, man. Go around him. That's an option, you know. Okay, Piastri's in. Let's see. Let's see. 2.7? Okay, well done. Yes, 2.7 from the team. I like that. I like that. That's a good overtake. Gasly overtakes Magnussen. Okay, he's up to P9 now. Gasly is kind of pushing on the mediums. What is everyone else on? A lot of people on softs. Let me go standard on the tires now to see at the rest of the look. session. Okay, so there we have the yep, down the DRS tray, just as I predicted. Nicely done, boy. Gazi's getting overtaken by Verstappen. Piastri spun. Piastri spun. Shucks. I didn't even tell him to push, did I? Yeah, he's on conserve and he spun. Hmm, strange. Overtakes Norris again, that's fine. Well, just bring it home, you two. Bring it home. I say we go attack on the tire and push. I think he has tire life left. Okay. Piastri is a different story. I think he can push, but he doesn't have any tires left. He might have to fight Norris for P10 with like nothing in his caliber, uh, nothing in his locker. Okay, we'll check back in with Piastri in a moment, but I think Gasly should be in for a good, decent position finish here. Come on. And then towards the second half of the lap, I'm going to tell him to deploy ERS. Now. You done a good job. Let's deploy. Drain that battery, mate. Drain it. I don't care. Got to defend against Verstappen, so. Good defense so far. Piastri's up to P10 now, which is good. Exactly what I wanted. Oh, and it's Hamilton! I don't care for now because we're in a tense battle for P7 and P10, which would be decent number of points for our first race. Let's take a quick look at the Norris overtake then. Up the inside, the same spot. Nice. Very nice. Good. Alright, that's a good, good overtake. Just need to cross the line, man. Uh, Piastri, can I tell you to attack? I think I can. We have, like, enough tires, I think. Okay, Gasly's in. P7. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Norris is more than a second away, so we're back down to standard. We should see out the rest of the session, and Piastri should get one point for season two so far. There. Okay. I'll take that. Having failed to, you know, finish Grand Prix regularly towards the end of last season, I will take a decent finish. Brought him up to P7. I'll take that. I'll take it. Well, this weekend, Pierre Gasly flew us to the stars. Good race, Pierre. Good race. Well done. Great racing from Alpine here today. Some high quality work all round. They do say success breeds success, and I'm sure the team will be hoping that holds true. The end this weekend in fifth place in the constructor standings. We'll take that. The teams now look ahead to the next round. 
where they'll duel it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia also a good one, so we'll see how that happens. Lewis Hamilton back at the top step of the podium, Perez and Leclerc on the podium alongside him. Sainz, Russell, Bottas, Gasly, Verstappen, Vettel, and Piastri in the top 10. Piastri also secured the fastest lap, of course, so he got two points for the team. Eight points in total uh, for Alpine so far. Norris, Ocon, Alonso, Ricardo, Magnus, and Latifi, Albon, Schumacher, Jo, and Stroll round out the finishers. So let's take a look at the driver standings. Yeah, P7 and P10, nothing changes considering it's our first Grand Prix. And then in the constructors, Alfa Romeo and Alpine are tied. Interesting. And Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes are fighting it out at the top. But I want to try and get P3 this time. Hopefully we can have steady cars, steady um, driving throughout the season to keep us in a competitive position. Uh, so yeah, overall good race weekend. Development point for Pierre. Nice. Maybe a development point for Piastri as well, perhaps. And... Don't forget to put Jack Dewan in the car. That's one thing I'm going to keep in mind now. 4.4 mil earned. So that's good. And a lot of money coming in. Nice.